Well, Come On In The Water is fine because from Touchstone Films, we now have Splash, directed by Ron Howard and also starring Tom Hanks and Miss Daryl Hannah. Good to see you both. You. Touchstone Films, what's this all about? Well, uh, Touchstone Films is a kind of a new division of the Walt Disney Corporation. Um, you know, over the years, what, Walt Disney Pictures has evolved into uh, a company with a great deal of integrity, but a label. Yes. Uh, and justifiably so, and one they feel they should be proud of. Uh, children's films, family films. Uh, at the same time, there are a lot of other stories out there, a lot of other pictures that as, as businessmen, as, as uh, corporate executives, that they'd like to be able to be involved with. More of a mainstream kind of a product. Uh, but they don't want to dilute the integrity of the Disney name. Uh, thus, Touchstone Films. Okay, so when you say mainstream now, and I'm going to direct this to both of you if I may, if you had seen Splash as viewers, say 10 years ago, with the Walt Disney name on it, right. how might you have reacted? Would you have been surprised? Maybe we should say five years ago, something like that. The, the film as it, as it is made as now? It, as we see it now, uh, with a relative amount of skin, as we might right. say. I'd be surprised now. Yeah, really? I'd be I'd be disillusioned now. I probably wouldn't even go see it if I if I but just because I wouldn't think that it would I would probably think it was like a children's oriented film. And then you would be so surprised I, to see what you see there. Yeah, if I had gone. Yeah. Well, how much of a problem might that be then right now with people coming to the film thinking of it as a Walt Disney film? What kind of reaction might you expect? Well, I I think that the uh, the Touchstone announcement addresses that. Also, the, you know, the name Walt Disney will not appear on this picture. It's not a part of the advertising campaign. And uh, the, the way the picture is being promoted is, uh, is here's a comedy. It's about a man and a mermaid. Yeah. At the same time, it's a moment in history. I mean, can I maybe be a little <laughs> pretentious and call it that? Because this truly is something new for Walt Disney. It would be a, it would be a pleasure for me if, uh, if it worked for the company. First of all, I had a great time uh, dealing with them. Uh, I've always respected the company, but, uh, but I'm glad to see them progressing. And at the same time, I'm really glad to see them not violating the Disney name. Because, I mean, I'm a parent now. That go. does stand for something. Yeah. And I don't like that to be uh, clouded or, you know, muddied by So anything. by calling the film maybe a new entrance into a more adult market, we shouldn't go too far with that, lest we give a mm. wrong impression. Well, it's a, P it's a PG film. It's, uh, uh, you know, I think it's, it's all handling good taste. But, um, I, you know, it's, 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 not, uh, it's not a Herbie picture. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl Hannah, I'm going to shift the emphasis to you, if I might, for a moment, because at least in Kansas City, within this last month and now coming up with Splash, we've seen you in two films, Reckless and Splash, and I suppose for some of you who might not remember you in Blade Runner, we forget that you've been in the business a while. We think of you as just happening right now. Right. How long have you been in film and TV? Um, for, well, for the last four years, but I've been acting for the last 11, but Play in theater and stuff. In, in theater? Yeah, what, in what have you been doing in, in Chicago? Just, you know, well, you know, your ordinary school stuff. Sure. And then also after school, you know, I was in the Chicagoland Theatrical Troupe. And just I have difficulty placing you in ordinary school stuff, though, Daryl, I'll tell you. Uh -huh. I just can't quite make that jump. I'm oh, afraid. listen, <laughs> I was mostly chorus member, you know. <laughs> well, now, I'd like you to, uh, well, tell some tales in school here, if you would. You've worked with Tom Hanks and you've worked with Idan Quinn in two totally different kinds of, of pictures. Could you compare notes with us a little bit with these two different leading men? Well, yeah, they're just as different in life as they are in film, you know. Uh, Aiden is uh, just a real nice guy, good actor, and, and real serious about his, his work and stuff. Right now he's doing a play in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And Tom is, you know, just hysterical and great. And I mean, they're both, you know, like, <laughs> I liked them both, you know, but they're just different people. Your work in Reckless is so much more verbal, I suppose, in a sense, than your work now in Splash. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what difference now that makes for you as an actress in Splash, where for a while we don't even hear you speak. Different kinds of challenges? I like it that way. <laughs> I would like to Let's be mute Ron the whole film. You know? <laughs> what, is she a very verbal person anyway, Ron? Well, uh, yes. I mean, she's conversational, and you can, you know, and 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 you can t you can talk to to <laughs> Daryl, and and she can talk back. <laughs> but uh, um, in what I think she does have is a, a kind of an ability 
to be a presence and to communicate with just her eyes and, and, and use her body and, and motion to, uh, to, to create an image and an, an emotional reaction in the audience. And that's kind of what, what attracted Brian Grazer and I mm -hmm. to her, was, was the fact that we knew she wasn't going to be dull and boring when she wasn't talking. But you really exploit this, too, because at key moments, the romantic moments especially, really tight, luminous close-ups of both her and Tom. Right. Was that part of the concept right off the bat? Sometimes you're just going to go in there real tight and just... Well, we, w we wanted the picture to, uh, to be a contemporary film, but we wanted to give it some of the treatment of the, the, the old, really romantic... Yeah, that is a more traditional comedies. style, isn't it? Yeah. And so there were the slow... And I talked with Don Peterman, the cameraman, and, and we evolved this, this style where from, from time to time we'd, it'd be very contemporary with... Uh, and you know he shot flash dance, and we'd do some kind of jazzy stuff, mm -hmm. and then once in a while, just the very traditional, slow, uh, dolly in on a person's face, and and he he was this is great. This is what he said. We did tests before the picture started, and you know we had talked about this, and he came in and he hadn't really met Daryl, um, and and he saw her and he lit her and he photographed her. We went and he said. Well, with Daryl, we can go just as close as we want to uh -huh. go. <laughs> yeah. So, the man has to know those things oh, right yes. away. Oh, yes. Well, particularly Don, he used to be a, uh, uh, do, do a lot of, of fashion commercials, you know, and so he's really good about that and very aware. Well, that night for night photography, especially, working on location in New York City, uh, share with us, Daryl, if you would, about those, I mean, did you have to rope off areas, full city blocks to get some of the night photography or? Typically, how did that work out? Well, some of it was so late at night that people weren't down the street. <laughs> <Nobody cared. laughs> <You know? laughs> no one was around, you know. But we, we shot in Times Square one night, and you know they, they just put up barricades. And it's not like people really know what's going on or anything. It's not announced that you know they're shooting a movie or what it is or anything. But people are just interested when anything's going on in some place like Times Square, so they crowd it around. Well, now different kinds of locations take us to the Bahamas, and now we get into something really interesting because I would. Have Imagine as a dancer yourself, Daryl, you must have felt very odd, trussed up in the thin costume, where, which would immobilize you for no. hours at a time. Tell us about that. Well, I didn't feel uncomfortable at, at all because um, you know I used to tie my legs together when I was a kid and you know swim and really yeah oh. you know pretending that I was now a there's mermaid. a method for you. <laughs> <laughs> She's preparing early for this. Uh, well, was, that's what she said in the interview. She came in and talked about that. Uh, and, and they didn't believe me. I'm I didn't sure, buy it you know? for a second. No. Uh, well, she's a good Some actress. I've seen her around, about. but she just wants a job, you know. Yeah. She's willing to. And uh, then when I saw her testing, you remember this? We, we, we had doubles. You know, we were looking for doubles. Because oh, yeah, I just. Right. It wasn't part of the audition for, uh, for any of the women to get in the pool and swim or anything. It was an acting choice we were making. And. Um, but once we had cast Daryl, we went to the swimming pool and we were said, okay, now we're going to get a double. Uh, and uh, we had all these women come down there, beautiful in the water, aqua ballerinas, people who had been involved in mermaid shows in <laughs> Florida and things like that, and, uh, and asked Daryl to come by so that she could get in the pool and we could kind of compare shapes and sizes and get a good match. And uh, so they swam for about an hour or so. It's so actually just to stand next to them. Remember? Oh, yeah, and yeah. Then, then I, I asked you to, a suit from yeah. one of them. <laughs> Would you jump in? She jumped in the water and started swimming. And she was so lyrical and so beautiful and so free, whereas all the other women, everything was kind of choreographed. You could see them holding their breath. Daryl was totally relaxed. And when she came up out of the pool, I went running up there and I said, Daryl, I want you to get in shape. I want you to get in condition. Very good. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to the movie. You owe it to me to try to be able to do as much of this stuff as you can because you're you're beautiful and and uh, and you have a gift for this kind of thing. So I'm we so can excited. more or less assume that whenever we see her in the water, that is her. Yes. You know what's really funny? Um, w the hotel that Brian Grazer was staying at in Nassau when we were shooting the Bahamas stuff was the hotel that I used to go vacation at with my family a lot, and one of the main places where I used to play mermaids in the swimming pool of that hotel. Uh, she's Ocean playing Club. mermaids. Yeah, right. I mean, that was the that was like my major memory of me playing mermaids was in that hotel right so there. So a few miles off got. in the reef, she was doing the real thing a few years later. This is not only an epoch-marking event for Touchstone Film, this is a moment of destiny <laughs> for Daryl Hannah. 
so. When you're down under the depths and those scenes and your eyes are wide open, can you really see anything down there? You can see about this far, you know. So you're working blind a lot. Yeah, right? definitely. When Ron would want to direct me, you know, he we had sort of a sign language, you know, this was the camera and this was you. And if you wanted you to go over the camera, he would go like this. But he'd have to put his f hands right in front of your face so that you could see it, you know. <laughs> or I would take my mask off give yeah. it to her, she'd put it on and clear the mask and I'd try to act something out for her. Right. Show anything. me what he wanted me to do. Daryl, let's go one-on-one -on -one for a moment and just pretend Ron Howard is not here because could you tell me how you felt to be in a Ron Howard film? It, he seems to be something of a star maker after Michael Keaton and Shelley Long. And How does it feel at this time in your career to be in a Ron Howard film for you? Uh, feels great. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would uh, advise anyone to, you know, do a film with him if <laughs> well, they had an opportunity well, Ron, to. Well, I could send you my resume. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no, I mean, it's true. I mean, not as, you know, I, I, as well as being a star maker, whatever that is. I mean, he's a really great director. He's really great to work with. But it's a s oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, because, you know, he was an actor for so long, and he's been working, you know, all of his life practically, you know. So uh, it's just... Uh, I mean, working with someone who knows so much about everything and is, is so comfortable and relaxed around the whole thing is just really wonderful. You know? What about this, the fact that so many young people are involved in his projects, not to mention Ron himself? Yeah. Does that help? Does that help on the set? Well, in this film, it was really unusual because even Brian, you know, yeah, was the young. The producer was young. I mean, everybody was really well, young. How young is he, for heaven's sake? I think he's 31. <laughs> But I mean, it was really exciting because it was like, you know, it was like a team, you know, like, a, you know, it almost felt like we were going out and playing baseball or something, you know? <laughs> well, mention like baseball to Ron Howard. And I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ron, I was watching, I caught a few references to the New York Yankees and some of the sports jackets and stuff, and I still keep wondering when you're going to make that baseball picture you've been promising. Well, I tell you, I would really, I'd like to make a baseball picture, and I've even recently re read a script, which is a, a, a good script, but I think that... Uh, well, I think a couple things are happening. First of all, they're waiting to see how The Natural does. Yes, uh, The Robert Redford picture Malibu for TriStar, Malibu. and, and uh, Barry Levinson directed that picture, which I think looks great. I've seen a few minutes of it, and it looks fantastic. Um, but uh, there are all of a sudden a lot of scripts kicking around, and you know what may have happened to me is that, uh, that I may have missed that boat, because what I don't want to do is go chasing everybody else around and make a baseball picture after somebody else has done it. We've only got about a minute left. Could I get some quick Academy Award either predictions or nominations of your own emotional okay. favorites of the ones that are nominated? How about Best Picture? Any ideas here? Uh, 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 right stuff for me, definitely. Tom Hanks said as much as well. Yeah. I can't give any because I haven't seen any movies <laughs> really lately. Like, like, I, I really haven't. You know, and I and I'll say one other thing. Although I, you know the the people who are nominated in the best director category are outstanding, and it was a tough choice, but uh, I can't imagine somehow that uh, that Phil Kaufman for the right for the right stuff and Carol Ballard for Never Cry Wolf didn't make it because mm -hmm, those are indeed. two unusually brilliant films and also unorthodox in the way that they were made. Uh, and maybe a little less standard than some of the films that were nominated. This is a bit of a leading question, and we haven't much time, but do you think in worrying about the Academy Awards that sometimes we lose sight of what might be the better achievements by trying to second-guess the Academy? <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's such a subjective thing. Uh, it's very good for the business, uh, and uh, uh, it, it generates a lot of attention in the movies, but you can't really take it all all too seriously. It's, and, and, and if nothing else, what it does is it stimulates this kind of conversation. There you go. We've been in the swim talking about Splash <laughs> with director Ron Howard and Daryl Hannah, who's also starring in that motion picture. A Touchstone Films release. We'll be hearing yes. more from that name. Thank you very much. Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.